Hey, Piotr, how are you? Hello. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. How are you? Also great. Yeah. Thank you for joining our event. And uh, I, I see that there are a lot of abbreviation in the title of your talk, that it's easy to get lost. And I believe it's definitely not the final list every day, new abbreviation or every new day, new model. Yeah. And yes. How that's about exactly, you? That's exactly you, the point. Are you Sorry. using, I don't know, AI every day to simplify your daily routine or something like that? Or you're a bit cautious about that? Um, I would say yes. Uh, so I'm trying to use um, AI, maybe not every day, uh, right? I try to keep weekends off, but I try to use it um, in many, many places. Uh, as you will see, I mean, previously, I wouldn't be able to generate uh, such a presentation myself, uh, like quite a few slides um, come from uh, AI, I mean, the image generation or, and so on. It also helps me in my uh, like a daily uh, daily work. I would say, for example, I know how to answer a question in, in languages I know, like be it like Java or, or Linux shell, for example, and I'm not quite sure how to answer someone what to do, for example, in Python. Then I can ask um, uh, an AI assistant basically, hey, this is like how the solution should look like in Java. Could you please help me translate it to, to Python? And then I can quickly verify it. Am I a little bit scared? Yes, uh, of course I am. Um, I mean, I guess people from Ukraine know any like um, better than anyone else these days that uh, this could be like technology could be used also by malicious people uh, in, a, in a wrong way, right? So as is with any technology, I'm afraid that this might also be used in like, uh, not for like a general good, of the of the people like humankind uh but also like uh, bad things um some bad things may come out of this but for this i mean just so we are more aware where is it coming uh from where is it heading to or what can i give us or not i mean it's better not to have this um just fear no matter what but try to understand first and then you know with better understanding hopefully comes like better usage Thank you. And pretty curious uh, to see from your side how we can use AI to simplify our, I know, engineering from engineering perspective and what scenarios you will present for us. So don't want to waste your time and good luck with your talk. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, uh, just as Oleg said, um, this, uh, I mean, a nickname for this talk could be also a buzzword bingo, right? So uh, you have uh, many of these buzzwords, um, and then you, everyone you you encounter them, uh, one of them you just go check, 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 and eventually, when there's like a whole row or column, uh, you can shout bingo. Um, so I'm I'm super happy that I uh, that I'm at um, at uh, yet another Java Day Lviv. Unfortunately, uh, I'm. Or like I'm I'm not happy that I can't do that on site and this has to be online. Um, yes, this is it basically, right? So you scroll social media, uh, you even open a newspaper or, or like a television or whatever, and it says like AI here, AI there, and eventually you might be either tired or like basically feared. Uh, but what is coming uh, with this whole AI thingy, right? So you're even afraid sometimes to open your fridge because um the uh like ai might be actually already in there somewhere between the yogurt and and um and a carrot right so the idea behind this talk is try to demystify some of the acronyms that are used uh if you happen to be just like me um, a java developer and um, don't have like much experience with um, ai in general and i hope to show you like a small example how it can be uh useful uh for you as uh not less like a developer but like when you want to create um, a simple product or something um something like this i i believe that already like a tons of materials like how you can use it uh, ai as a plugin in, in your uh, like editor or um, ide uh so I, I don't see at least for this talk to uh show such examples um so here it is right uh, this first acronym that we're gonna do is FUD or FUD, which is fear, uncertainty, doubt, or sometimes disinformation. 
um, right? So media uh, or, or general like influences can can make um, certain like emotions in us, which are like these three, uh, and it's it happens or applies to us when we see uh, anything related to AI. Um, so yes, um, this talk will be about the deciphering or decrypting some of the um, acronyms that are there, uh, and we're gonna do this thing pretty much like Creed did. So uh, we're gonna go uh, not for bow buddy, uh, but definitely B stands for business, right? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, I'm Piotr Przybo. I live in Poland. Uh, I work uh, as a senior developer advocate for Elastic. And therefore, uh, like, I will try to explain you in general the principles that are there uh, to make it uh, easily digestible for a developer, let's say for an ordinary developer. But um, just for my convenience, uh, whenever it makes sense, I will just use um, Elastic stuff. But of course, you can like run models on your own or whatever, like you, you're not limited um, uh, to that. I'm also Java champion, test containers champion. And if you need me to, if you need to find me on social media due to whatever reason or contact me, this is how we can do this. Um, the question is, who are you? And if at least, because this is this barrier, right? This is not a live event. I mean, we are live, but we are not like on site, all of us, right? Like face to face. So if you could uh, introduce yourself, like um, what is your stack? Uh, what, uh, like, for example, what you're expecting from AI or, or how many years you've been working, that would be really, really great. A uh, little warning for this um for this um talk um let the audience be aware basically so um the, the most important part is that um i'm not a data scientist or uh of course i like i'm also like a not ai person per se right so i'm, I'm primarily a developer um and uh, of course like i studied um AI a few years ago, like that was like 15 year ago, years ago at the university uh, or so. So I like understand the elementals um, and I have like, a, let's say, um, a paper for this or certificate for this. But a lot uh, has changed over the, the recent years and it seems that the momentum gets even higher. Right. So uh, if I say something uh, funny, uh, please verify it on your own. Uh, last but not least, uh, this whole thing, uh, like AI related thing, is basically, I mean, some people say it's going faster and faster. Some people say we've we've seen a, or, or like we're facing a wall for time being. I don't know. It's just like when you're watching this video, um, let's say a few weeks or months after, please be aware of two things. First, that uh, things might have changed already. And B, uh, that you should subscribe to uh, Java Day's um uh, 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 Lviv uh, channel uh, on YouTube, of course. Um, so another another acronym uh, that we're gonna have today is uh, FOMO, and um, we could go and check it up in in Wikipedia, right? Or we could try doing something else. Uh, and this something else could be allow me to uh, switch properly to um, uh, a needed window. So how can you, oopsie, sorry. How can you uh, check what, for example, oh gosh, it's the overlay, sorry. I guess it, that's it. Yes, how can you check it as a developer? I, like I'm Java developer and I will use uh, predominantly Java in this talk. Um, how can you check what FOMO means, right? So you can go and uh, check, for example, this lang for chain uh, uh, 4j, sorry, lang chain 4j, which is a fork of the of the Python version, right? It already exists exists in in Java ecosystem. We can connect to um, OpenAI's uh, chat model. Uh, you should have like your own key. If if you don't have your own key, you can go for demo. And I'm using the, the ChatGPT 3.5 because it's the ne, I mean, people say it's the oldest one. That's true, but it's also uh, a free one, right? Uh, I mean, there's like a limit, right, limiting or something, but you don't have, you need to have paid subscription. That's what I mean. Then we're going to wait maximum like one minute and we're going to build it. Uh, what's this? It's the temperature. Uh, and sometimes I call it, uh, maybe it's like, it's it's not a proper scientific um, description, but I call it the YOLO factor. So basically the higher it is and the, like it can uh, reach like 1.0, it's the the more creative but also more hallucinating the the model can be right so sometimes you can 
you can start tuning just with this temperature or there's like another like set, there's a whole set or bunch of parameters you can tune and we're gonna just ask this uh, uh model tell me in one sentence what FOMO is right so as you can see i'm just not asking you tell it but uh like working with this stuff for quite some time i already know like you can you have to say like uh please be uh, more uh, specific so one sentence or tell me as I'm like a high school student or something like this uh, right uh, like just to describe yourself as a as a as a reader or someone who needs to understand this and then we should have the the response it's just a um, synchronous one so uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that this demo works as you never know with the demos uh, there's like a bunch of logging and where's the answer uh, oops, sorry, I, I clicked like a wrong thing. Sorry, I should have clicked this. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, the fear of missing out, which is FOMO, is a modern phenomenon characterized by anxiety and insecurity stemming from the belief that others are having more rewarding experiences, that other people are, are, are already know more or are more, more experienced and, and, and stuff like this. So I'll try to um, convince you during this talk that it should be like not big a uh, thing to hop on um, on this um, AI wagon, right? As you can see, it's really it's just a few lines of code, and you can already start using it as a developer when creating some stuff. And basically, it it just looks similar to uh, I don't know calling any third party service or database or or whatever, right? So we can think about it like this black box, tune some parameters, send some input, expect some output. And the output can be like, um, not just like uh, one sentence, but can be like images, can be like um, uh, like pages of, of code generated. You can also set the context and whatnot. So there's like a lot of opportunities for us developers to, to use this thing. And before we go to the AI, let me go back quickly to the algorithm because like with this, what it seems that everyone is opening this fridge, right? And everyone is saying like, yeah, we should go for AI this and we should go for AI that. Uh, it's just, should you really? Because if you know that two plus two equals four, you don't need to send this to this AI because it's going to be more expensive in time in money, it's also uh, like going to generate more CO2 and be like in general wasteful and so on. So whenever you know like a exact prescription or an algorithm how to do something and you don't need any like creativity in there and, and the results are like, like the success criteria for the results are well, well described and, and, and all the steps are well described, there is no need to abandon the, the approach we had so far with like good algorithms. Uh, right uh, to to create like expected output. So in that case, I would say let's just stay uh, with the algorithms. The thing is, sometimes we may go for AI, which stands for artificial intelligence. So in general, when we have this situation, this kind of a problem that we know the let's say the starting criteria. We know like okay, we're in this situation. This is the context. This is the input data, and then we know more or less or we can judge the the expected result right let's say um we uh, will be satisfied by this kind of solution uh, not other kind of solution uh but we don't know like the exactly the steps in between then we can use artificial intelligence like just like human being right just like a person could like uh, having or seeing something for example or knowing something um the person could propose a, a solution that maybe not the best but it's acceptable uh without like even describing you what's the whole thought process or what are exactly the steps. It's just, oh, because of this and this, I will give you that. And there are like a bunch of solutions for artificial intelligence, right? Uh, so we can go for um, genetic algorithm, right? There's like a whole bunch of, of machine learning. Um, there are like algorithms that uh, mimic, for example, how the ants behave, uh, right? So uh, this way, so various like uh, evolutionary algorithms. And of course, there are also neural networks which are like structures which try to mimic how our brains are operating, right? So basically uh, what we do in such neural network is more or less this. Uh, first, that like different kinds of neural networks, uh, like for different design for different purposes, and they also can have different topologies, right? So they are not always like um, looking uh, like in this, in, in this picture, but usually, or like most of the time, or like let's say the stereotype is that we have 
three kinds of layers in these neurons, right? So we have input neurons, we have output neurons, and we have any given number of, of uh, layers in between these two, which, is, which are like input and output. And now the whole thing is that we are training these uh, neural uh, networks, right? Uh, and basically, uh, so we can uh, like set the topology uh, initially as a developer, for example, or as, a, as an operator. And then uh, we train the neural uh, network either manually or automatically, like providing like some some data for for the input and then uh, judging basically uh, the the outputs. Uh, so this may look like a learning uh, a language. And when you pass the test, you get good grades. When you don't pass the test, you get uh, bad uh, uh, grades, right? Or for example, when you recognize the fruit, you need to know if it's poisonous or not. And when you poison uh, the fruit is poisonous, of course, we're not killing the, the whole neural network. But then we're going to, uh, for example, say uh, bad network, bad network, right? And therefore, we will like we can. Uh, how it works inside that it weakens these um, these connections between the the neurons and in like over like great oversimplification we can say that these are for example mathematical functions like connected together it's just we don't know exactly the algorithm so we just tell the whole thing uh, like we try to the the whole thing like in a number of of steps and so on this is how it you know, works and we can try different uh, topologies different like a number of layers sizes of layers uh training time and and so on and so on then we can go to llms which are large language models so these are neural networks which can understand uh basically human language and which can output uh, uh like um uh, uh, stuff in general also in 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 human language for example the difference is for example when you see uh when you show it like picture of something uh for just uh, artificial network you can train it and when it's poisonous it will just uh, ignite one neuron and when it's not poisonous it will ignite another neuron for example we just need two neurons right and for llm that's that's not the case uh because it we can train it using for example like a wikipedia a whole library or, or what have you uh right so this is the kind of thing and then Okay, yes, there are also extra extra points. Yes, so it should like understand human language. So we enter here the realm of uh, natural language pro uh, um, processing, right? Uh, these training in general can be um, uh, non-supervised or can be uh, semi-supervised. I don't think it's like um, any times uh, like totally supervised. What we mean here is like, oh, how do you train a neural network in general? For example, we have uh, a data set and we have let's say thousands of of, um, of samples and we know what we expect for each and every sample and we divide for example uh like uh, we use 70 percent or 80 percent for training the stuff the neural network and then we use the remaining part 20 or 30 percent just to verify if the learning process was okay and that's like unsupervised approach and when we want to have super semi-supervised is then it's just human operators also checking if uh the stuff uh, that the um uh neural network learned is 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 okay right and we can use llms for various purposes uh for for example for for translating text for um uh, like um uh, other stuff uh right and then we go into um gpt which is also uh, an llm so we get even deeper and here the difference is that it can um yes the the, the name is um uh, I mean, I won't get, I won't get uh, through the uh, like all the other things. But the whole idea is, or the whole improvement is, based on the paper, if I'm not mistaken, from 2017, that the transformer can semantically well understand uh, the, or, well, just understand maybe um, the connections between the 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 words, and it has kind of like a focus, and can also just like human beings read, for example, in whole sentences. So it's not just like word by word by word and then just igniting like so, some neurons but it has like a, a somewhat different uh, architecture right and of course it's pre-trained and uh, here we also go to gen ai uh, so chat gpt is an example of gen ai but it's uh, not only that thing uh, right and 
Gen AI can, the whole idea is that it's generative. So it can generate stuff for us. And this can be not just like a, you know, texts, uh, like a single sentence uh, um, answers. It depends like what the model uh, has been trained for. Uh, right, so it it can be trained, uh, for example, for generating images, music, um, answering questions, uh, uh, like a, a bunch of bunch of things. Uh, right, um, these like here, I would like to show you, for example, oopsie, sorry, I went too far. Um, so I already have some models imported into. Um, my um, elastic, uh, I'm elastic cloud, right? And I will tell you what these models can do. Uh, for example, um, so this uh, this model, when I feed it with the text, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy fog. It will turn it into um, vector representation. We'll get to that. But I can go, for example, see if I put it like, "Hello, my name is Piotr, and I live in Wrocław, Poland." Uh, this is another model, uh, and what it does, it, it identifies persons and locations uh, right so for example you can use such a model uh, and 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 run for example run it over the the, uh, the logs from your application so you uh, remove for example the the uh, personal information uh, from there or like you just identify location and for example when there's an incident you you notify like I don't know people in 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 Europe because something happened in Poland whereas it would if it was for example India it would notify the Indian team or something like this uh it can go better right for example we had to wait for half an hour for our french fries uh that you see for example there are such comments for your restaurant chain and then it can tell you that it's uh, most probably a negative feeling and it's like 99.8 percent certainty that this is like a negative review so you can address these negative reviews um uh, even uh before the positive ones right um so they don't destroy your reputation of your restaurant or something. And uh, also like uh, this one, where I can run the, so the same sentence, but it can like try to detect the, the feelings that the human had uh, or like what's the feeling expressed by this uh, by this sentence. As you can see, it's uh, like a 46% anger. Uh, so you can use, uh, for example, you can use um, um, LLMs for uh, identifying feelings, identifying locations, uh, and and other stuff, right? So it's not just a funny chat GPT uh, window. And here we go further, which is generative. Okay, we've been there. Sorry, and this is the step: artificial generative intelligence. Uh, and people are arguing here, and I. I I'm basically like, let's be honest, I'm too stupid to assess these discussions, but I've seen these discussions happening. Discussions, sorry, discussions happening. And the thing is, are we there yet? When will be there? And will we ever be there? So artificial uh, general intelligence is in theory an, an intelligence that can do everything. All of these things I have shown you could be combined into a single model. Uh, so basically, this could be like a, a really intelligent human being, like a person. Uh, so uh, like if you give if you give them the prescription, they will bake cookies. Uh, if you uh, run them a te test, uh, sorry, give them a text uh, and a good dictionary, uh, they can learn a foreign language quickly and translate it to you and so on and so on, right? Uh, some people say, that the latest um, uh, ChatGPT 4.0 is the first step that some people say will be in this stage in like three or four years. Some people say not for next hundred years. I really can't tell, uh, like verify on your own, but I guess you folks are really used to verifying things on your own, right? Sadly. The thing is, as with like all the software we know, because eventually this is just a software that it works well on my computer, Right, but it doesn't work really well when it's like actual use case, and this is like an example of this. So I asked um, the newest uh, ChatGPT, "Hey, what is a uh, what are string gatherers in Java?" And let's say this is my business problem, right? And uh, it started like telling me something about collect like collectors, and it's not what I wanted because I wanted to like learn something about stream dot gather. Uh, right, which is like a new thing emerging in Java 22, uh, 23, and so on and so on. So let's let me let me tell you that we want to like focus on this problem uh, for the rest of the presentation and how can we deal with that. So 
the problem is with this um, generative uh, artificial intelligence or LLM is that it was trained on public data some time ago when, for example, there was no chat documentation on on um, uh, stream gatherers, right? Uh, because it was trained using this uh, public internet data, right? So when I ask this question directly here, uh, what stream gatherers are, it just starts to hallucinate, like making things up. So the whole idea is I can go and grab some data, like my business data, it can be like my wiki page, my, I don't know, my holiday policies, it can be like some images, descriptions of the of the stuff I'm selling, uh, I don't know, uh, the music files I have in my, in my uh, like banks or whatever, right? I can use it, right? And then I can store the representations usually in a, like a vector database or something. And then when I have the, my question based on this stuff, I, I have to select the context window and uh, grab this context and send it along with my question to this uh, Gen AI thingy. And then let's say it's intelligent enough. So it uses the knowledge it was trained on, but also let's say five pages of notes, right? Uh, if this thing is intelligent, it should be also intelligent enough so I can say, hey, see, this is like just five pages from my policy, from my holiday policy, read it and like summarize it or answer my question based on what you have learned from these pages of notes, right? That's the whole idea. It, so the question is, how do we select these things properly? Because you can't let this thing in, for example, to sniff everything. That would be like a proper learning. That would take like a lot of time. It would be soon outdated. Uh, and maybe your data isn't like even public because you may want to run this LLM uh, on your own, right? So you're not asking like a public um, one or, or, or like, a, yeah like it was something of a public internet right so the context is the king basically we need to select the proper context why because when you say football in england this it means this and but in america it means this right so we need to be specific you need to know and even tell the darn ai thingy what's your context because football is both of them depending which side of the atlantic you're in uh right so you may naively uh, think we can select the, the, the things we need basically from a SQL database or like, I don't know, grab it out or whatever. So let's say we have like my search table, like we are selling some stuff. So this can be like a descriptions of the products I have. And you can say content, content is like milk and content is like chocolate because people typed uh, milk chocolate, for example, in the, in the search bar, right? In the search text, um, uh, text box. The thing is, maybe they were looking for milk chocolate, but maybe they were looking for chocolate milk. And it's not trivial to do something like this just based on terms and, and stuff like this, right? So here we go into like more meaningful search. So we can start using vector search for this and how vectors can look. So this is the, the like the super basic uh, description, for example. So I have two characters from Star Wars, Darth Vader and Princess Leia, right? If I'm not mistaken. And she's uh, realistic, so she's minus one, minus one and he's um, like a cartoonish, so he's one. So I have just one dimension and I have a vector, which is like a single uh, number, right? We can think about vectors as just sequences of numbers. They can be like integer numbers. They can be floating numbers, uh, basically like sequences of even arrays of, of numbers, right? So in this case, it's just single one. And then uh, we can add another dimension where they are the human or machine, right? So that, that Vader is like in between. Therefore, the second dimension for him is zero. Whereas this droid is like fully machine. Let's say it's it's realistic, like we saw it in the in the cinema in the movie. So it's realistic. Uh, whereas Princess Leia is both human and and realistic. So she's here, right? And then uh, we can go and add more characters. So for example, when we add uh, Ananakin, he's uh, realistic, but he's slightly more machine. Why? because of his palm, right? So his palm is like artificial one. Uh, therefore he can be, he can't be like, um, like just like a Leah one zero, but he's only uh, 0 0.8. And like, here it goes, you add dimensions uh, basically, and then stuff uh, has like, it's based on its meaning or it has its representation in this uh, vector space, right? Whatever, or how many dimensions uh, we have. So uh, here, I mean, after two, uh, even the projection of three dimension, dimensions would be already just a projection, right? And I can't he, add you here, for example, 512 dimensions. 
but let's extrapolate let's go um with this uh, approach uh, the important part is uh to try not to mix like not to try sorry we can't mix vectors because vectors eventually are just numbers see so i could have let's say uh, sequences of, of numbers being like 500 long right the thing is i need to know what in what space or like uh, uh what dimensions uh, they are and what they represent what what's the model basically right so if i have like a flat map and i draw a vector like uh from here to here uh, uh it has slightly different meaning that if i'm describing it in like a spherical um uh, uh approach right so then you see just because it's numbers you can't compare numbers with numbers you need to know what these numbers mean or at least you have to compare numbers uh, always given by the same uh, exactly the same model right um because else it's uh, basically uh doesn't make much sense and then we can go further so see we can describe this scene and by the way, this is like, I don't know, the stars aligned or something because I, I love the theme of um, Java Dale Viv um, this year, right? And this is also it. So I don't know if you recognize the scene, right? So there's a lady in a red dress, right? City, fountain, uh, a lot of people in black suits, right? And we can even uh, like show it like this. So this could be seen as a vector. See, this could be like the dimensions and we could have like a numbers ignited in like um, a certain uh, points. And just by looking at this, like if you're, if you're Neo, for example, or Morpheus, you can instantly understand what's happening, right? And this is what these models are virtually doing, uh, right? So they, they capture the, the scene, for example, uh, text, image, uh, whatever, and they produce these 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 vectors, right? And we use these vectors uh, for vector search for determining this uh, this context, right? So this is like there are, there's a number of um, there's a number of uh, vector stores, or some even say vector databases, basically um, pieces of technology where you can use uh, which you can use to store vector representation of the things you have. Uh, basically to search among them, right? And Elasticsearch is actually like using under the hood Lucene for this. Uh, Lucene is, is very nice, a vector database, only if you need, need like a REST, a replication, whatever, then it's nicely wrapped for uh, Elasticsearch, right? And if I'm not mistaken, currently we can have up to 4K dimensions, but then I, would, I don't know if you really need that long vectors at least uh, now. So here we go. You have your source data. For example, this is like a description of like uh, address, right? Or you have a picture of address. And there are models, for example, which understand both at the same time. Why not? And then when you store this thing, uh, this document, you can you also need to have uh, to store the vector representation of something, vector representation of the of the picture, vector representation of the of the description, uh, or whatever, right? And this can happen two ways so for example you can have your like in many ways okay let's say but i know at least two uh you you're running your model here you just query it like as any other service right it gives you for example you send in the description uh, and as a result you get let's say um like a vector or like a bunch of vectors right if the thing is really long uh, and you can then store it along with your document or for example in Elasticsearch, what you can do you can add inference pipeline and then it will add this um, uh, embedding for you what's an embedding embedding is this vector representation of something uh right basically so here we go uh back to this uh, thing that we wanted to search uh right so i have uh, created um, in my uh, Elasticsearch, I, I, I created a web crawler and I told it, hey, understand the doc or like crawl, sorry, crawl the documents from uh, from um, uh, from a JEP database, right? And uh, store also the vector representation of these documents. Uh, and here, when I'm asking a query, the query is translated into vector representation as well. And then based on this, uh, a, like a, a matching is happening, or like give me the closest, uh, a, the, a, a number of closest neighbors and how this proximity or this neighborhood is calculated. Well, we just have, let's say arrays of numbers and then we ha can have different uh, algorithms you can have. We can have cosine, we can have like uh, Euclidean space, we can have dot product and also like other arguments. Based on this, I just get, let's say, some top documents 
which are not just milk chocolate, but which are semantically uh, close, uh, right? And how we can do this, uh, maybe I can show you that again uh, in the dev console. So um, yes, I should have a query here. Yes, so we can basically for ask, for example, for KNN, uh, for uh, so uh, K nearest neighbors, and then either I provide this query vector on my own, or I can just go and say, hey, create this, build this vector for me. Uh, so this is my uh, question. Tell me what a stream gatherer is, right? And then uh, this is the model, which I also use to ingest the, the, the documents, right? And then when I run this question, uh, sorry, this query, as you can see, for example, top hit is JEP469 and the other one is 473, um, right? So, Yes, eventually we get a list of, of documents or, or database hits or whatever. And then, I mean, these are these models, uh, they, they, they're emerging. You can, uh, I mean, this is like a one year old more or less, and you can see what you can use, the open one, the closed ones, uh, the one you can run on your own or the, which are just available uh, like uh, as a service, uh, whatever works for you. Um, where do these models live? Usually they live, or many of them live, sorry, on a hugging face. So hugging face is just like a Maven repo, uh, more or less, for all these models. So they are here, for example, and this is this um, this model which I uh, showed you for identifying uh, like um, people and places. So when you run, my name is Wolfgang, and I live in Berlin, and this is for English, right? That's why, or here in English, that's why I can. Ask, I can't ask in German. Uh, it see, see, it predicts that this is a person and this is a location. And you just can grab these models. You can import them, uh, like and run them, whatever you please. Uh, one, the, one of the places is, uh, as I told you, um, Elastic's, uh, Elastic Cluster. And these models, what they do, uh, they do uh, a bunch of stuff, uh, right? So they can... Um, classify, uh, they can recognize these entities, uh, they can be question answering, they can create these embeddings, which are these vector representations, uh, and so on and so on. And this is how we can import them using Eland, or maybe a better approach is used to Docker uh, container for this. Um, so vector search is just about numbers. Let's say out of anything, we can create uh, numbers and these numbers are not necessarily meaningful. And the thing with semantic search is that these numbers actually mean something. They have this representation, right? So we see this, this, this vector and this, uh, based on this, you see, oh, this is the lady in red, for example, or this is like a chocolate milk, but not like a milk chocolate, uh, okay? And they are not literal match. Uh, let me show you what I mean by this. Um, uh, also, what's what's important in these vectors? So, see, I have here this uh, this model that is generating this embedding. So, basically, a list of floating numbers. And here, as you can see, I have three very similar uh, sentences. So, the fox jumps over the lazy dog, wolf, or a programmer. Programmers can also be lazy, as we know. And then. It's, uh, uh, let's see, for example, this is uh, 003 and this is 029 and so on. And this is the predicted value of, or like embedding of this sentence, right? And then I like scroll for the next one uh, and see it's not 003 or it's not uh, minus uh, 029 or something, okay? These are not like prefixes or, or something. It's just the whole meaning of this is captured in all of the all of the values of of here in in here in this vector. Okay, so don't take these vectors as 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 we could have think like for example, if the cities are close uh, or nearby, uh, the the then the instructions like by Google Maps could be like uh, let's say ninety eight percent the same, and only the differences here at the end. No, no, no. This is not how they happen. And so that's why we need to know uh, what kind of like similarity is needed, uh, what this model represents or something. Uh, when I can show you this uh, mapping here for this um, index I have, let me go for predicted value C. So this is a dense vector of uh, length 384 uh, floating numbers. And for similarity, I'm going to use cosine, right? So then it's basically like one point, another point, and how far they are, uh, like basically what's, what's, the, what's the angle uh, between them. I mean, that's oversimplification, but uh, more or less it works like this. Um, okay, cool. Um, so 
Then when we query for Han Solo, right, then we have to translate Han Solo into vector, right? And uh, based on this, we see the results and this is the list of results. So uh, Han Solo is uh, hu as human and as realistic as Princess Leia in the documents, for example, or in the embeddings we have. Uh, and Anaki is less similar and so on and so on. So, hey, based on this, we have this list of similar stuff right uh so we can go and select this context window based on this for example we just go and say we need top three characters or top three pages uh right or or like top three doc uh, like uh, documents from our um payment policy or or whatever or top three products from our e-commerce e-commerce store um the thing is sometimes it's not working well and uh, i can tell you for example an, an orange like someone types in search box, you have you're running a store and someone t t types orange. And what does it mean orange? Do they mean like, uh, I don't know, uh, that there's a color? I mean, orange shoes or orange t-shirt? Or m maybe they need like uh, orange, something related to the uh, cell phone carrier? Or maybe they need something from Netherlands, although that could have been Oranje, I don't know. Uh, or maybe they just need the fruit, an orange, and we don't know, right? So sometimes what we, like the the basically the input is not enough for this whole uh thingy to to understand or to comprehend then we uh like also can use a good old uh term uh search which is uh, also like much much faster and cheaper and then we just need to adjust the scores because as you have seen here the scores are between zero and one and as you know if if you have happened to work anything with Elasticsearch, the the size the, the 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 scores can be different right so we can play with the boosts and this here again works on my machine but then the, the query is slightly different and this boost doesn't mean nothing or it's like basically useless so what we can go and do is try to do something like it's known in, in racing or in ski jumping, for example. Like it doesn't matter, uh, for example, what exactly the time was on uh, on track A, track B, and track C. What mattered was your position on every track or during every race, for example. So you 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 scored uh, like second position in all three races, and you are the champion. Because, for example, there was nobody who gained more points in all these races, uh, right, than you. Uh, so here's the idea. Uh, so we can have, for example, turn-based score, uh, similarity score, or search, and then we combine the results. And how do we combine them? Uh, there are like many techniques, like this linear combination, uh, RRF or something. And this is how it works um, in, um, or maybe here is the even better approach, uh, which I have here. And this is this is it, right? This is like a new, um, new syntax uh, in recent versions. So we can just say retriever, RRF, and I have retrievers, and I will have two retrievers, one for vector search and one for standard term search, right? And that's why uh, when I run this and when I look for the scores, the scores are, as you can see, null because it, the scores individually don't mean anything anymore. What matters is the position from all the races, right? Uh, so we have gold medal, silver medal, uh, bronze medal, and so on. Uh, okay, so... Uh, and now let me... We still have uh, some time. Let me show you, uh, hopefully, how it can work in, the, in IDE, right? Uh, when we run this uh, thing. So let's just do what I told you, right? So I'm, I have, I creating, I'm creating here my um, uh, a client for my uh, Elastic uh, Search uh, uh, document store, right? And then I'm here creating. I'm using again uh, Langchain for J. Uh, uh, yes, Langchain for J, and I'm creating a, a retriever. And what this retriever is doing is doing uh, exactly that. So I'm building um, simply a vector query. Right, and it's going to search for something using the query, and the query will be just the text. Uh, right, and based on this, it's it's supposed to give me top three documents. And when I have these top three documents, uh, okay, then I'm building this or creating this model, and this is how I create my AI assistant. Right, and I just say this is my the latest uh, version. This is how I retrieve these notes or how I build this context I'm going to send you, uh, right? And this is my question. And mind you that this question is going to be sent directly to Elasticsearch. And because it's translated to these vectors, which means it has the meaning, 
uh, then uh, based on this, uh, we can create um, like the list of these notes, right? And then assistant, uh, when asked these questions, we'll use this content retriever to retrieve some stuff and uh, send it to the um, chat GPT and hopefully we will see an answer. By the way, this is extremely dummy um, uh, rag agent. Don't do it like this uh, at production uh, or at home. This is just to show you how little we need to actually start working with this stuff, right? Um, so I don't know if that's exactly the question I asked uh, here uh, uh, that I asked on the previous slides when it started hallucinating about collectors, but see, now it started to give me a proper answer here. So it says, um, yes, the function was first previewed in Java 22, and now it's even re-previewed in Java 23, and so on. So it suddenly, it, it based on these notes, just these two documents or three documents, three jabs that were sent there, it it's suddenly it's intelligent enough to understand uh, what uh, stream gatherers are without, at least at the first glance, um, uh, much uh, hallucination, right? It says it is similar to Collecto, but it's stream gather. So it's not uh, hallucinating, uh, right, in this, uh, in this very case. Um, okay, and now the question is, I guess that might be one of your questions. Shall I be uh, using this AI thing or sh as a developer, shall I be uh, abandoning or stay away from it? I would say, or like sometimes this question is, uh, I don't know who said that, but it was like a very wise words that your job probably, at least in the coming years, won't be taken by AI, but we taken by the person who knows how to use AI, uh, right? So maybe this is like this sword with two blades. So one blade is dangerous for us developers because as you can see, we can quickly build stuff and, and learn stuff uh, and adjust the stuff we have, like the products, the, the, the programs or whatever, uh, right? But on the other hand, it, I mean, we can do that with this, with this AI. So in theory, that could render us jobless. But on the other hand, we as a developers using this stuff properly can be more productive. So will we be that jobless? I'm not so sure. Uh, I would very much like, folks, uh, because this is one of the very few times I'm showing this talk, if you could uh, take like a few minutes, um, let's sorry, not a few minutes, a few seconds uh, to, to rate the, this talk. I know it was very quick, but also like we don't have much um, um, uh, time. Uh, I'll see if there are some questions. Where is your iron cap? Okay, yes, a very nice question from Andri. Uh, <laughs> where is it? Uh, Actually, it's it's over there, but I, I won't I won't reach it. Um, yes, um, actually, I, I say this this uh, you know this thing with like um, uh, with uh, tin foil could be could could be useful uh, because it's sort of like in, th in the same direction, like trying to debunk um, some things. Um, hey, Peter, yeah, let, let's. What are the best? Sorry, yeah. How do we run these questions? Sorry. So let, let, let's review probably together those questions. Yeah, or okay. maybe I'll answer multiple of them. But first of all, thank you for breaking down those uh, complex concepts and I know presented them at, from more usage perspective without deep dive because we just uh, consume, consume some, I know, consume some API or some integration and that's it. We want to achieve mm -hmm. some uh, value and that's it. We don't want to understand how it works right because it's pretty complex and we are not data scientists so thank you and for showing those demos with integration with elastic elastic search and etc yeah that was pretty interesting um yes sorry can i answer the latest question could you reshare my screen again just oh, for a second if no that's problem. not a problem uh I'm not able to answer all of these questions related to Elasticsearch right now and on spot, okay? Uh, however, if you have such questions, just like uh, Andrew, what are the best practices for optimizing Elasticsearch for this and that, I think encourage you to go to this page, uh, discuss Elastic CO, right? This is like the, let's say, open source forum uh, for Elastic stuff. It's uh, not only me, there are also like uh, other developers, uh, and develop advocates and just basically elastic community trying to answer your stuff, right? So this is the best place I would say uh, to start for such uh, stuff. Uh, back to Oleg. 
Yeah, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I missed uh, some other questions that you already answered uh, before that. Um, there was one from Frankie de Jong. I'm sorry ah. if I'm mis mispronouncing the name, about popularity of football. Yes, football is um, way more popular in the US, I guess. I mean, myself, I'm not a football fan. It's just there, it's called soccer. Right. So if you say on a like in Atlanta or New York, if you say football, everyone would understand or immediately associated with like the American football player, you know, the gear, the helmet, not with the soccer player. Right. So football is football here in Europe, but in the US, it's called soccer. That's the that's the point. Right. So you need to know where this person is from where they ask you about football. <laughs> Thanks for answering. Yeah, it's kind of off top question, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah uh yeah and one more question about replacing of junior developers by ai <laughs> from... uh yes uh that's a very good one and uh believe it or not i discuss it almost every time when my when i meet my speaker friends for example or i usually i, I work from here right for years and when i meet like face to face my um my uh friends or, or colleagues it's when i go to conferences and this question is like showing up everywhere and there are already stories like so for example like there is like even i uh could say like for some trivial stuff it would have taken me for example two or three days to supervise a junior developer so they do something so maybe it's easy just to swipe a credit card pay 20 bucks per month right and have the thing done on the spot by a, by a service or something it's just the next time i have this task I have to supervise AI again, whereas the idea, uh, because it's not going to be like at least between be, before we reach the age AI and whatnot, right? It's not going to retrain itself on the spot. It can understand the context, like the chat of the like the few messages I have in this chat history, but it it won't understand something that I ask you, uh, the I ask the chat GPT about thing uh, or something like two weeks ago, whereas like uh, a junior developer i mean they, i mean we've all been there right or, or we're still there but we learn with every task we do when we are supervised we, we learn so basically the whole idea is the next time with similar task we'll be able to just do it without any supervision right so again maybe we should tell our juniors how to use ai and yeah. then so we have like less stuff to 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 supervise uh right this this is it it's in a way it's just a tool yeah not to replace but to combine like the juniors can use it and to simplify some tasks that it's hard to do for them yeah yeah thank you for your opinion and there is one more pretty large <laughs> okay uh, from max uh, so i have one question to you how can the integration of generative ai with vector semantic and hybrid research technologies improve information retrieval and what role do techniques such as llf nlp llms play in this enhancement considering the challenges and impacts of um, fear uncertainty and doubt and fear of missing out in the rapidly evolving AI landscape. Yeah, pretty complex <laughs> one. I, I lost the beginning when I just finished. Yes. But yeah. I'm I will try to answer this one the best I can. So I hope uh I yes, I, I, I think this question was asked uh just judging by the timestamp uh before we went through uh, with this example, right? So in general I mean general advice would be like start putting so much energy into this fear it's better to direct some of this energy into like actually trying to do something uh with the thing right you can use chat gpt 3.5 uh, for free you can run uh these models from hugging face uh for free when they are like open source uh or properly licensed right uh, and then you can you can see and i hope like i explained that the vector is just comparing the numbers right whereas, whereas semantic it means that these numbers can carry a value but sometimes they're not enough uh themselves and then we need to like ap apply like the the old approach like searching for the for the data um for example in, in like e-commerce store the old-fashioned way but also like for example uh we can use vector representation for the images 
uh, right? And then we as human developer uh, operators or like the clerks, for example, or we have like a new new addresses in stock. I don't need to describe, for example, colors in metadata or stuff like this, uh, right? And RRF is just one of these uh, algorithms. By the way, it's like a very nice paper, only two pages long telling us how to like combine these, but you can use uh, different uh, approaches. What I think would be nice and useful is to have them in the same place, right? Uh, so you don't have to uh, like query two places and, and do the same work twice uh, and so on. So yes, instead of going FOMO, just do the darn thing at least a, a little bit, okay? Thank you. So, and uh, it's probably, ah, what do you think from, from Ivan? What do you think is the biggest misconception Java developers have about AI technologies? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, honestly, I, I don't, I'm not sure I can answer this question. Um, um, really I, I i would just speculate here so maybe i won't uh i wouldn't i would uh, yeah i wouldn't say um anything um sorry uh like misconception i don't know it's like i, I i'm not saying like i mean maybe the, the 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 biggest thing okay maybe i can say one thing uh that there is some huge uh like magic it's not magic. It's very sophisticated engineering and science applied on this, right? That's why I said I'm not data scientist, so I won't be able to apply this, uh, like or explain things properly. We have, like, I'm very lucky to work with 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 Julia um, uh, in our team, and she's data scientist. So whenever I have like a question, like, hey, why I'm getting these numbers, right? Uh, she's able to answer um right so i can i'm like covering more like engineering stuff and she's more like uh data science so maybe that's that's it so maybe it's just we approach it from this engineering point of view um and and uh we don't understand that as there's actually like uh science and tuning and so on mm -hmm. so it's not that big mystery as we thought probably. i mean eventually I mean, the issue with these LLMs is that they are so huge. I mean, this is, this is, I'm just speculating here. It's that in general, it's difficult for a single human person to precisely analyze how it's working. But for example, if you have relatively simple neural network, right? Uh, recognizing like uh, doing like OCR or like recognizing if the song is, uh, for example, uh, what's, what's kind of uh, music genre it is, right? Then it's relatively simple uh, network and you could like understand it in one one evening right so and then it's just thing just like with the the the, the dimensions of these vectors right could get like there's more and more of them and so is the the size of this um llm uh stuff and and so on so thank you and very nothing to be sorry for max we're here <laughs> to exchange like as much as we can our knowledge and and probably one more question from my side, yeah, um, uh, yeah. From my side, what do you think should Java, I don't know, step into this world and maybe of LLMs of uh, building uh, these uh, models, or maybe it's not efficient to build such models with Java. Uh, I remember that uh, vector API is still incubating, and Java probably is not that efficient to process. Uh, as such a matrix computation, etc. What do you think about that? Um, yes, that's a valid point. The um, so even if we get vector, I mean vector API is uh, like in preview. It's going to be like eighth time or something um, in Java 23. Uh, but fun fact, it's already used by certain um, uh, projects. Uh, for example, Elasticsearch, uh, the newly released version 8.14, is using it because we have like a new engine. Uh, for ESQL, right? So preview or not, we're already using it. And if you don't know what Oleg meant, it's like um, there are like vector instructions or SIMD instructions in our CPUs. 
Uh, so if you have, for example, what, like one array of numbers and another array of numbers, and you need to have like a third array of numbers, and just the so the first result is that two first uh, added, and this is the result, the next two added, and so on. You don't have to do that in a loop, like a naive for loop or while loop. You can just uh, rely on your CPU because CPU, for example, can add four numbers um depending on on the size of registers architecture or whatever right in a single cpu instruction uh all right so this is it the thing is it's still not uh, gpu mm -hmm. uh so uh, in my understanding and uh, this is like what we would need to do is uh if you wanted to to like train these models uh in in in, in something like this we have we would need to have like a very nice and smooth access to GPU. Uh, but on the other hand, for example, uh, Python is also like not doing a lot of this stuff directly, but they're relying on the underlying C, right? And yeah. so here we enter the, the realm of Project Panama, where, where we can like call native functions as well. So we just kind of like operate or orchestrate from, from Java. Um, one thing from sure, it's not like, I guess that many people got the impression that to use AI, uh, as like in your product, you need to be running, for example, or your product has to be in Python because we've seen this like uh, tons of 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 Python. Uh, these are called like Jupyter notebooks and stuff, right? This is not true, as you've seen. I'm perfectly able to do the same stuff, or maybe like very similar stuff from from Java, right? I have Java APIs and, and so on. So just as I query a database or make like a REST request to another service using Java, so I can ask uh, ChatGPT, for example, to generate uh, an image or whatever. Like go for the examples and tutorials or from Lang, uh, Langchain4j. There are like dozens of them and you'll see uh, what beautiful things you can create with these. It's just a biased opinion that only Python is suitable to even consume some APIs because there is a world of AI and that's it. Okay, Python. Yeah. Yes, ex yes, exactly this, right? So these things can be consumed or, or operated or requested uh, to do something from, from Java as well, right? And then I don't want to go into language wars. Uh, I think like, um, okay, maybe some languages weren't the best choices uh, retrospectively, but like there is no reason to, to say that we cannot do this from, from, from Java, dear Java developers. We absolutely can. And that's why I'm trying to propagate this knowledge during Java day after all, right? No, it's not Python day also, uh, although I would say we should welcome people from all technological stacks. Cool. Thank you for your thoughts. And uh, yeah, and in general, thank you for the cool presentation and uh, and for great discuss further discussion and for answering those question questions. Yeah, and uh, right now we have a short break, lunch break, and next talk will be in one hour. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. See you. Good luck. <laughs>